is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The natural mind does not understand the things of the spirit. Okay, let's turn our Bible to Matthew chapter 13. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 13 from verse 3 to 9. He said, and he speak many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seed fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them both some fell upon stony places where they had no much earth and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no roof they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. And please help me turn to somebody and say, walk the word. Walk, walk the word. Walk out the word. Amen. And my subject this morning is walking the word. Walking the word. Um, the word that produced in our life is the word that we receive, work with, that eventually produce that which God has promised us. That God has promised you a thing is not a guarantee that it will come to pass. Not because it is he has not been settled but it just because he also need your cooperation to bring it to pass in your life but let's pray this morning father we thank you spirit of the living god we worship you this morning we thank you again because your word is ever yea and amen lord brood upon the word grant us grace give us understanding heart even as you Bless me this morning. Grant me utterance to declare your counsel in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Walking the word, walking the word of God. Um, the scripture said in Joshua 1 8, meditate on this word day and night that you may observe to do what is written thereof then you will have good success that the word is written if you see it it's another thing for you to produce the word he said when you receive the word and you observe to do what is written in other words there is a participation there is a part that you and i will need to play to bring about the manifestation of what God wants to do in our lives. Please turn to Hosea chapter six, chapter 4, verse 6 for me quickly. If you Hosea chapter 6, verse 4, he said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So my people are destroyed. My people are not able to attain. My people are not able to receive the promise I have for them. While because 
because they've rejected the knowledge of God. I'm not talking of, there are all kinds of knowledge. There are knowledge that you can get there. But there is the knowledge of God. He said, as you are forsaking my law, you're forsaking my way, you're forsaking the things, then you are not able to receive what I have in store for you. That is why Ecclesiastes says something. He said, you know, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, he said, I return and I saw that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skills, but it is time and a chance that happened to them all. In other words, you can have the knowledge of the world. There is a difference between the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the things of God, and the, and the knowledge of the world. When you understand the knowledge of God, it gives you an advantage. It gives you privilege to what others don't know. They might yet have, you know, what we call the worldly knowledge. But what gives you an advantage in life is the things, the spirit of God, the word of the Lord, the laws of God that gives you advantage in life it will help you to attain the things that god have in store for you and i hallelujah Amen. so he said the race is not too the swift so people might be very fast but still not attain uh, people might be skillful and still not be applied. Hallelujah. It takes the wisdom. When you receive the wisdom, I tell you, if you want to advance in life, everything that you need is in the scripture. That's why you say, I don't know why this person is so smart. This person is so, and still, it looks like nothing, you know, is happening. It, the thing is, there is the worldly knowledge, and there is the worldly skills, which it is very important, but the thing is, if you back it, back it with the knowledge of God, there is no stopping you. There is no way you will not attain and receive, uh, not just the crown of glory, and also receive your reward here on earth. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Second Corinthians chapter three. He said, "Who?" also had made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letters or letter but of the spirit for the letter kill it but the spirit giveth life the letter kill it but the spirit giveth life so when we are talking of the knowledge we are talking of the knowledge that comes from the spirit that's the spirit of god that when you receive this word what happened is that it produced in your life that's why the scripture said you know faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, so the natural mind does not understand the things of the spirit. So when you deal with your life or deal with things carnally, there is a possibility that you will not receive what God has in store for you. So for you to receive the promises of God for your life, the thing to receive what God has in store for you, you must tap into the spirit because you can have the letter and it will not profit you. You can be skillful. You can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You can be well educated, have all the degree, but the thing is when the spirit is not backing it up, uh, there is a possibility that you will miss out of what God have in store. I want to say that the truth is 
As a believer, we should have advantage in everything. That does not mean we don't go through crisis, we don't go through challenge, but we know that the end uh, will be glorious, that God will not allow us to go through things that he will not bring out his glory, that when he allowed the devil to touch Job, he has something in mind. The scripture said that the latter end of Job was better than the former. So there is nothing you go through when you have the word of God. That even when everything around you looks like nothing is working, you know by the spirit of God. So you must walk with the spirit to attain the things of God. So he said that my people are destroyed for life of knowledge so they are going with what they see they are going with their feeling with the circumstances and not able to discern what I am doing in their life what I am doing in this season so they are not able to tap into what I have in store for them hallelujah praise the living Jesus so he said they are not able so some are not able to receive the word of god not because it is not powerful but because they did not receive it or when they receive it they did not work it out to produce what god wants to deliver to them hallelujah so he gave a parable the scripture that we read gave a parable and that jesus talked of the seed uh, that was sown so a lot of time uh, if you grew up in the village like me in the part of the africa that you know when we were young we used to i used to follow my grandmom to the you know to the farm so we plant all kinds of seed hallelujah so the thing is when you plant seed most of the time there is really nothing that is wrong with the seed where you plant your seed matters hallelujah where you plant your seed also determine if that seed will produce the same seed that if you plant in the soil uh, it will produce if you bring that seed and drop it here it doesn't matter how long it stay it will never produce anything so if you drop it in a place that is uh, that is, it does not have the right uh, soil the right atmosphere to uh, to help to nourish that seed, uh, help that seed grow, it will never, it doesn't matter, you know, how you do it, you can never, if you take an apple seed and take it to the Africa or most especially in Nigeria and plant that seed, it will never grow because they don't have the right climate, the right uh, seed to produce. So there is nothing that is wrong with the seed, it is who it is the soil that is receiving the seed that is why your soil must be prepared must be you know uh, must be fertilized to receive the seed that god wants to deposit in your life hallelujah so he gave a parable of the sower that went to sow seed and he described the different kind of places that the seed fell into. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword going and piercing through the marrow and dividing. So the word of God is powerful. The word of God has potential to produce, but the thing is what soil is the seed being sown? Hallelujah. So he explained, the scripture said that why he gave the parable, the disciple called him and said, Master, what is the meaning of this? So in verse 19, started explaining the parable. In verse 18, he said, listen to what this parable is. The first one, he said, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes 
and snatch away what was sown in their hearts. When the word comes, and he said they did not understand it, he said he will snatch it away from them. The truth is, you know, when it comes to, like I said, when it comes to uh, the things of God is always different. That's why the scripture said the preaching of the gospel, you know, is foolishness to those who are perishing. So they don't understand the potency. They don't understand the, the potential in the word that is being preached. So the thing is, they do not understand it. So it never really got in. The scripture said the evil one. So which means he had the power to produce. But because they lack understanding, so they could not receive the word that was preached. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Corinthians, if you will please... Uh, help me with second or first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 please thank you first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 thank you he said but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually what discerned they are spiritually discerned so it, it, you cannot receive it it will never make sense to the natural man that is why you know sometimes it, it is foolish that when god tells us to do some things uh, it, it, it takes spirituality it takes Depthness for you to understand some certain things and step into it. The scripture said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the thing is for you to receive that word, for that word to make sense to you, you have to spiritually discern it. Hallelujah. Because if you are looking at things from the surface if you are looking at things uh, from the natural mind what happen is that uh, you will look down on some things that have the potential to produce the scripture said get wisdom in all that getting get understanding hallelujah so the thing is he did not produce for him why? Because he didn't have understanding. He was too carnal to understand the things of God. So he missed out on the sea. So the sea that was sown in that place. So those category of people never really get to produce the things that God wanted them to produce. Then the second set of people, the scripture said, the seed falling on a rocking ground, that is the seed that was sown, it says some fell on a rocking ground, referred to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. And that is a interesting thing. But since they had no root, no debt in them, they last only a short while. When trouble and persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. It also tells you that every promises in your life comes with potential trouble. Every promises that God gives to you have trouble so if you are not able to handle it what happens is that you miss 
the promise of God for your life for that season. Hallelujah. So he said, they received the word. They believed. They were excited. They said, oh, this word must be for me. If you see, they were jubilating. They had, you know, weakness in their heart that this word was for me. But the thing is, the word did not bear, it did not find, it, it, it did not find root in them. So it did not produce. Even though they received the word, when trouble came, they quickly forgot the promises of God for their lives. It's important that you understand that every promises that God has given to you have potential trouble. But how you handle that trouble in your life determine what you get. A call, a people, a gathering of leaders in faith and in Christ, in commerce and industry, in sports and entertainment, in beauty and fashion, in government and in education, in spirit and in truth. We are moved with a passion and zeal for the lost and the hurting world. We are equipped to build bridges and raise platforms to society. We stress cultural relevancy and yet harmonize our diversity as we communicate by all means our message. We are gathering of the saints raising leaders and rebuilding nations still on first corinthians uh, i think i will read from verse 13 to 16 still on first corinthians 2 thank you 13 just back up it said which thing also we speak not in the word which man's wisdom teach it but which the holy ghost teach it comparing spiritual things with spiritual then for thing he said but the natural man received not the things of the spirit for god uh, for their foolishness uh, 15. but he that is spiritual judged all things yet himself is judge of no man 16 i think i would love that he said for who had Know the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. So you are able to see because you, you are in the level where you are able to receive what God is saying and not what your circumstances is saying, not what your situation is saying, but the thing is what your spirit man is saying. So he said they are spiritually discerned. So it is they that have the mind of Christ that they are able to overcome. He said why they could not receive. Why? Because they have no roots. So they lose their seed. They lose out on their destiny or their season at that time. Why? Because the root the world did not find root in them. Then the third face talked about the seed that falls among the tones, refer to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choked the word making it unfruitful. Hallelujah. So the thing is they receive the word, but the worries, the things, that's why the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said all these things. He the, said all these things will, will be added unto thee. So we are not able to receive what is given to us. Why? Because we have not really, you know, been able to 
concentrate believing that God can deliver. Hallelujah. So he said the worries, the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of wealth. So it, it means there are things, you know, it is interesting as, as beautiful, as resourceful, um, as this country is, it could also be very deceptive because now you always owe. Oh, there is always work. There is always an avenue to make money. But it is also a deception. You know, the truth is that money or things, material things, should never be your master. Somebody said money was meant to be our slave master. So we are supposed to be the master. And sometimes some people, money has become their master. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, from verse 25 to 33. I'll read Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to 33. If you will help me, please. Matthew chapter 3, sorry, chapter 6, from verse 25 to... Thank you. It says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than remnant. Behold the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bounds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by thinking thought, can add one cubit unto his status? He's saying, what you are trying to do, you can't do it by yourself. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for remnant? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not. Neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee or unto you. So the thing is, you know, interestingly, when I, as a new believer, when I, you know, used to study this, you know, part uh, scripture, I, I asked myself, oh, that means. We're not supposed to walk, we we'll just relax because God can take care of us and all that. And the truth is that He will take care of you, uh, but it, it, you will not find comfort. Hallelujah. Let me explain what I mean. You know, the scripture said when um, the children of Israel left the, um, Egypt, He fed them with manna. And the manna He gave to them, so they went there they took the manna you know and the truth about life it doesn't matter how lazy you are you will always survive hallelujah it can never go bad that you will not find food to eat one day hallelujah but the thing is you will not live the kind of life you want and there are seasons like that hallelujah 
but for, uh, even for those who are walking. But the thing is, the scripture says immediately they stepped into the promised land. Immediately they stepped into the promise of God for their life. What happened is that the manna ceased because now they had land to till. Hallelujah. So it means that God expects us to walk. But the thing is, we don't trade, you know, our time with God for work. Hallelujah. Because the truth is that there is no time you give to God that he does not pay for. Hallelujah. When he says give, he says as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So every time you sow to God, he sows back to you. So the thing is, what are you giving? Are you giving your spare time? Are you just giving? Are you making the necessary sacrifice? Or you are just doing things when it's convenient for you? Hallelujah. Because it is the way you respond to things that he responds back to you. So, so God cannot break his laws. He cannot break what the truth is that because God knew that he would not be able to just, he's the all powerful, he's all knowing. He could have just said, after all, oh, these are my children, they made a mistake. Oh yeah, I'm recovering them back. But he had to sacrifice his son to buy us back. Hallelujah. So there are some things that God will not do. What am I saying? The truth is when it comes to God cares more for you than you think. He cares about your need. He cares about the things. But the thing is, a lot of time, so we have two, um, or should I say three kind of people um, in my own, I would say in my own uh, um, observation or uh, knowledge, you know, you have people that just pray, pray, pray. They are in church and just believing, you know, man and fall. And God said, you know, after you pray and look the word, because the word said, meditate on this word day and night that you may observe to do. There is the part of doing. So they never really get to do. So you see the mercy of God always come, but you are always getting handouts. So, but you have other set of people that the thing is, they are walking, and the truth is that they leave the path of God. And let me say it and say the truth is, where that, that is why you see the unbeliever, the scripture said the rain fall on the just and your just. If you are a hard working person, there is no way you will not make it in life. Hallelujah. But the thing is, at what cost? At what cost? But there is also what we call the balance. I call it the balance of life. Mike Mudok will say that you have the person and the principle of Jesus, that your ability to balance both is what brings about what God has desired. So you, that is where when Joshua uh, once said, he said, you will have good sources. There are people who have sources, but it's not good sources. Somebody, I read a book years back that said, you know, looking for number one thing that makes you happy and help other people. In that book, somebody said something that he took all his life to look for wealth, but now he's not using the wealth to take care of himself. In other words, trying to um, treat himself. Hallelujah. So it's not worth it. He's not even enjoying the wealth because he's always going for a checkup, always going for one surgery or another. So the thing is, when you work with God, he gives you advantage. That's why the scripture said, labor to enter into his rest. As you get into his rest, what happens is everything you do, that's why the scripture said that whatever the righteous do it, what happens is that he prospers. So God tells you what to do. And sometimes it looks like some other, and sometimes it looks frustrating when it, you, it looks like you are on hold and it looks like everybody is going, everybody is advancing and look like nothing is happening in your life. 
But I tell you, if you are working with God, God told me years back, 2005, he said, if you will work with me and stay with me, those who you think have gone ahead of you, you will meet them and outrun them. Hallelujah. So the thing is, when you work with God, that sometimes it looks like it does not make sense. But when God finished, the scripture said, when the hand of God was upon Elijah, he had thrown the horse of Ahab. Hallelujah. So when you walk the world, what happened is that it produced. It might not produce at the time you want it to produce, but it will produce for you. Hallelujah. But you have to walk the world for the world to benefit you. Hallelujah. So the scripture said that the world did not profit them why? Because the cares of things. So they care about when you hear people say, oh, I, 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 God, God will understand. I have to take care of this. I have to take care of this. Do your own and relax. Hallelujah. The truth is, you know, my wife was, was it last month or so? He told me something and I laughed. He said, maybe you have some, because I was saying, you don't even ask me how I survive. Huh? And he said, I thought you have one money, you know, you have saved some money somewhere. <laughs> and I looked at her and I laughed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the truth is, you can never be stranded with God. Amen. It's not possible and it's not the first time my younger ones have accused me several times. And they'll say, you know, you have this money somewhere and you're just keeping it. The thing is, I have never had a need. I might have wants that I'm not able to meet, but I've never had a need that God did not meet. Hallelujah. I've never had a need that he will not meet. So the truth is, God will always help you. God will always see you through, but you have to trust him enough for him to help you. If you don't, it will never produce for you. You need to understand that the word is powerful enough to deliver for you. But the thing is, if you don't trust the word enough, he said the deceitfulness, the care, the things you are caring about, he said, if you will allow me, if you will seek me, I will handle it for you. I will take care of situation. I will take care of things for you. So he said, but they that received it. That's why the scripture said, the Berean Christian, that they, their brethren were at their command. Why? Because they knew how to compare scripture with scripture and know if it were so. Say they, so they take the word, they receive it, they chew the word. The truth is that it is the word that you walk that produces. Hallelujah. It's the word that you walk that produces. If you are just expecting, so you receive it as you profess it, God makes a way. Hallelujah. God makes a way for you. You know, I remember I used to say in those days, why I was preaching those days in Africa, I used to tell them that I am not meant to be in Africa. Praise the living Jesus. Not that I don't love Africa. I love my country. I love it so well. I'm passionate about it. And uh, I will stick over for a visit. But I knew that I was not meant to be there. <laughs> Amen. So don't crucify me. <laughs> Amen. Praise the living Jesus. So the word works. But how it was going to happen, I never knew. You know, I, I've said it several times that when, if the interesting thing is when it was going to happen, I, I was not, I just went and I needed to it was somebody that was fighting me and said, you must, you must go. Hallelujah. 
So sometimes God makes, when you walk the word, the word works for you. It works things out for you. Hallelujah. But the th So you have to believe. You have to make, be willing to make that sacrifice. It, the word does not just, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease. So he said, if I can take care of the best of the air, he said, so look at all those things I'm taking care of. He said, you are much more important. He said, uh, Solomon, with all his glory, you are even much more important than Solomon. You are more, more. He said, if I can do that for Solomon, I will do it for you. But you have to seek me first. I have to be a priority in your life. When you make me a priority, I will make things happen in your life. So he said, they that receive, that is the people that receive seed in a good ground. But the interesting thing is, he said, look, but one thing is, all of them produce, they didn't produce at the same level. Hallelujah. The scripture talked about, you know, the man that was traveling, he gave one, you know, uh, five talents, he gave another two, and he gave another three. People will not always produce at the same level, but the thing is they will produce. Hallelujah. God will never, because God will not want to give you what is more than you. There are a lot of people, their success has become their setbacks. Hallelujah. So the truth is that he said they that received the word, they walked the word, they believed. So in those people, it's not as if the tribulation, the trials, the persecution, the lack, all those things came to them too. They suffered the same. But the truth is, God always come true. He said, because they received the word, they worked it, and it had rooted them. So no matter what came, it did not destroy them. That's why the scripture talked about, you know, it talked about uh, the houses that was built on the stony ground and the ones that was built on the soil, which means the truth is that we will always, there is nothing, every promotion. So if you are waiting for, even in any organization, they want to look at your capacity. You know, uh, a friend of mine was telling me this because um, he's a management and he, he went to um, school. So uh, what he, he said, he just simply went there to learn how to my boss think that was just what he went to learn and he said look when you are at a certain level your skills matter but when you are in another level how you work with people is more relevant than your skills as you go in life there are things that will test your capacity, your temperament, you know, your level of uh, IQ, your, your perception, things in life. So also, in sp the spiritual too, they will test you. They will test your muzzle. They will test things. They will always test you. For every promotion, there is always a test. But how you respond to eat will determine if you will go to the next level. Opportunity is always waiting for us. Opportunity, there is always an opportunity. And sometimes it does not come as an opportunity. I was telling somebody the other day, the person that fought me and said I'm, I have to come to um, America, the truth is, in our first dealing, I could have fought him because he did not meet my expectation. But my response made him to... So sometimes the way God designed things might not be the way you expect it to come. But how you handle what God is doing will determine what he brings into your life. So it's not that the word was not powerful enough. 
is all that the thing is the seed that was so it was the same seed that was so some did not uh, receive it why because they did not understand it even like when they were just talking they might just be distracted with other things but there are other people that you know they receive it with joy and they said this is the word but the thing is afterward they he said it no by the time they leave the church they just forgot the word they would just, I've had people tell me, Pastor, that was a powerful message. When I asked them, what was the message that was preached? They said, oh, I don't forget. But it was very powerful. <laughs> Amen. 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 So it is not just the word that was preached, but it is how you receive and walk the word. It is the word that you walk that works for you. Walk the word. The word is powerful. The word is real. The word can give you what you need. But the thing is, are you walking it? Are you walking the word? Walk it out and you will see the salvation of the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you. Thank you for your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us, even that it will produce in our life in 160 and 30 food in jesus mighty name we pray amen